Hey, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Today we're working on this 2011 Ford Edge for an ABS concern that has this customer pretty worried about driving this vehicle. See, they come up to a stop sign or a slow speed stop and sometimes the ABS engages and it feels like they have no brake pedal, right? The pedal goes almost right to the floor. ABS is engaging, but the, the trash control light didn't come on. The ABS light's not coming on. It doesn't show on the dash that there's a slipping condition but the brake pedal is definitely doing its ABS thing and the customer complains of a little bit of that groaning noise that an ABS pump makes as well. So we're definitely dealing with a problem on this thing that is causing the ABS to engage at those low speeds. The good thing about this problem is that you don't really need any special tools to be able to diagnose or repair this problem. So we're gonna use the scan tool today to do a quick diag and a, a good visual inspection. But before we get to that guys, just remember to, uh, Click that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up on the video as well. It really helps us out and um, you know helps YouTube suggest our channel to other viewers who are interested in this kind of stuff. So please do subscribe and thumbs up the video. So let's get right into it. So I took this thing for a test drive and I have the data here on the scan tool. And let's take a look at what we've recorded. We've, we've started with the wheel speed for each of the each of the wheels. Each wheel has an independent wheel speed sensor. Now, ignore the kilometers per hour, unfortunately, when Autel uh, grabs the data, puts it into a recording, it changes miles per hour to kilometers per hour, but guys, really the speed that we're going doesn't matter. Now, looking at this thing in the 1X version of the data doesn't really stand out. There's nothing really in here that I would be worried about, right? It looks pretty clean for the most part, but I like to view, like with using a lab scope, I like to view my data over time. So we take our little plus here on the X axis, and we put that up to eight, and if you guys have an experienced eye, you're already seeing that we may have an issue on that left front wheel speed sensor, right? The signal coming from the left front wheel speed sensor looks like a, almost a bit of a sawtooth pattern there as we scrub through some of the footage here. You can see consistently that the left front wheel speed has these little V's, these little dropouts in that left front wheel speed where the other three wheel speed sensors are pretty much perfectly smooth with the speed of the vehicle. Those little dropouts there are telling us what's wrong with this thing. It could be, well, of course, it could be the sensor dropping out, but more likely on these models, like these Fords with the, uh, in the Edge, Escapes, um, Explorers, there's a couple others, that use a pressed on tone ring on the axle shaft itself. So that tone ring, what happens is they like to crack. So a good visual inspection will reveal what's going on in this thing. So let's, uh, let's take a look underneath. All right, so this wire harness right here, this is our, our ABS wheel speed sensor. It's mounted external to the knuckle on here and is reading on this tone ring right here. So as these peaks and valleys uh, are spun around past the sensor, it's gonna change the signal and be picked up by the computer. Now, what happens is these axle shafts like to rust, and that rust right here is going to increase the overall diameter of the axle shaft where this tone ring is sitting, and that rust will actually crack these tone rings, and that crack is gonna look like a signal dropout, and that's what we're seeing on our scan tool. So as we spin this around, let's see if we can find a crack in this tone ring. And there it is, right there. Oh, wow, I can move the whole thing. Nice. So that's gonna be an issue. So now what happens is this, this crack goes past the sensor, it changes the distance or, or changes the signal going through the sensor to the ABS module. ABS module freaks out, thinks this wheel, wheel might be locked up and engages the ABS brakes. Let's head over to the other side and take a look at that. So even though we didn't see any issues on the scan tool for the right front, I always like to give them a quick visual inspection to make sure that we're not dealing with an issue starting on the right front. And this one looks pretty good. I don't see any signs of any cracks in here. Again, we didn't see anything on the scan tool, but a quick visual inspection while we're under here is always a, a good thing to do. All right, so, you know, not too crazy of a diagnosis. Sorry to the lab scope junkies out there, but we're not gonna need a lab scope to diagnose this one. You know, the scan tool took care of it and a, you know, quick visual inspection determined that that, uh, 
the tone ring is cracked. Again, if you guys are dealing with this and you don't have a full function scan tool and you can't look at the data with a tool like this, you know, if you're dealing with false activation, you're working on a vehicle that has externally mounted tone rings on the, uh, on the half shafts, on the axle shafts, inspect them. See if they are cracked. That's going to be part of your uh, party issue. Now, of course, there's scenarios where we could have other issues and a sensor could be bad as well, but uh, we got to fix what we see right now and what we're seeing is, uh, is that cracked tone ring. So we have a, a new axle shaft that's going to be going in this thing. Uh, obviously, it has the tone ring on it. Make sure if you're buying an axle shaft before you go installing it, make sure that tone ring is on there. Otherwise, you'll have no uh, ABS signal coming out of that sensor. So we're going to put this guy in. And I did notice a little bit of a transmission leak uh, out of that, that left front axle seal as well. So we're gonna throw an axle seal in it as well. Now I believe there is available uh, tone rings you could buy and you could put those, you know, mount them directly onto the axle shaft if you would want to. Uh, the issue is this thing's got 160,000 miles on it. The joints within the CV axle are, are probably a little bit worn um, you know, they're not vibrating, causing noise or complaint out of them, but if we're going to have this thing ripped apart to throw a, a tone ring on it, we're just going to put a whole axle shaft in it. It's just going to take care of it and uh, get this customer for a, uh, a worry-free axle shaft on the left front, probably for the rest of the life of this vehicle. So uh, we're going to get right into it and kind of take you guys along for the ride with it today. So uh, we'll start with ripping the tire off. Uh, let's clean up my workspace a little bit here first so I don't break anything. Now this isn't too terrible of a job to do. Um, yeah, rip the tire off, you gotta rip the, uh, the lower ball, ball joint off of the bottom of the knuckle, um, you know, take the brake caliper off, but not a, not a terrible job. Except for good old Ford lug nuts. Who likes dealing with the uh, two-piece Ford lug nuts that have the swollen caps? So much fun. All right, we got our big axle nut here. <clears throat> that is going to be a 35 millimeter socket. So now because we're going to be loosening that lower ball joint, we're going to have to pull this entire assembly outwards. We're going to have to pull it this way to get the axle shaft out of the, uh, out of the bearing, out of the knuckle. Uh, we are going to have to take the brakes off and we're going to have to take this bolt out for the hose. Now it's up to you how you want to take your brakes off. If, you, uh, if, if your vehicle needs brakes, you could take the two caliper bolts out, take the caliper off of the bracket and, you know, go ahead and do your brakes while you're, while you're in here. But for us, this thing still has good brakes. We're not worried about it today. So we're gonna unbolt the bracket itself and pull the caliper and bracket assembly off as a full unit and disconnect it from the, uh, the mounting, mounting section here on the, uh, on the strut. Now, a, a note here, guys, do not let your brake caliper hang by the, uh, by the rubber hose. You can damage that hose. I have these sweet little, I don't know, S-shaped hanger clips that work really good for hanging it on the spring, and then the other one through the, through the bolt hole. So that's what we'll use today. Why does red Loctite smell like cherries? Again, not letting the caliper hang on its hose. Oh, 
All right, now we got to take the uh, the ball joint pinch bolt out here. So it's got a nut on one side, bolt on the other, and then we'll kind of separate this a little bit to get our ball joint loose. little trick if you have stuff stuck like it's free spinning but it's not out I like to try to grab a I'll grab an open end wrench and I'll try to walk it a little bit out with the with the impact as far as I can and then I'll get the wrench between the the head of the uh, the head of the bolt and I'll kind of use it as a pry tool as I'm backing it out with the impact It looks like this when you're when you're pushing it, pushing it backwards. And sometimes what happens is these threads just get rusted up in here because they're exposed in this in this crevice or this crack of the uh, ball joint mounting spot. Now we'll disconnect the sway bar link so we can get enough flex. We got to be able to pull this control arm assembly downwards to get it out of the knuckle. So we're going to disconnect the sway bar link so we don't have to battle, battle against it. So if you're dealing with that sway bar link that's stuck, a vice grip on the inner collar here work, should work pretty good. There we go. So again, we're gripping on the uh, on this inner collar here with the with the vice grips. We're clamping on that to hold that in place. If you have replacement ones, usually there's two notches on them to grab it with a wrench. But we'll get that guy out of the way for now. That'll give us the ability to drop this control arm further down. All right. So the axle shaft likes to stick in the hub bearing assembly. That rust and stuff gets in there. Whatever. Uh, do not hammer on the end of this. You don't want to peen over the uh, the threads here. Even though this is getting replaced, if you beat the heck out of this thing and you peen it over, it's not going to want to slide out of the hub assembly very nice. So if you are going to hit it with something and you don't have an air hammer with a pointed tip, make sure that whatever you're hitting with uh, is hitting on just the the tip of the shaft and not the threads. You could use a you know, like maybe a socket or something like that, uh, a, a small enough socket that you could use on there to make sure that you're directing all of the force onto the shaft going this way and not onto the threads and, and peening it over. So we just got to get it pushed back. Obviously, we're not going to be able to get it all the way out of the hub assembly yet. The, uh, the axle shaft doesn't have that much play to it. And now we got to get the uh, the tie rod end off. All right, this just uses a little clip here. <laughs> kind of nice. We don't have to worry about a cotter pin. Is that 15 millimeter maybe? Nope. on that one. Now it's not uncommon for it to be stuck in there. Even though the bolt's out, these things will use like a friction fit, a cone basically in the bottom side of this. So to get this out, there's a couple different ways. You could use a pickle fork, ram it in there. But the problem with a pickle fork is you're going to tear the boot of the tie rod in and we don't want to replace this guy. We also don't want to hammer downwards on here because we don't want to wreck those threads. So what I like to do is a couple quick hits 
right on the side here will usually loosen it up. All right, we'll use a little bit of uh, some PB Blaster in here, try to loosen up the connection between the knuckle and the tie rod end. You also don't want to hit the tie rod end down because this is just a ball and joint socket here. So if you hit the tie rod end down, you're just going to pull this shaft assembly out of the ball socket down here. Ooh. So again, a quick whack or two and a little bit of PB blaster on there and uh, out she comes. And I think I might have uh, might have missed a little bit there, so we'll have to run a thread chaser on there and clean that up. All right, so now we have to try to get the ball joint out of the bottom of the knuckle. Now these like to really rust in place. Um, when you hear of technicians cursing in the shop, uh, removing these ball joints can sometimes lead to that problem. Now, if you want to get an alignment after this job, after putting this actual shaft in, it is possible that you could loosen up your two top uh, strut to knuckle bolts. But as soon as you loosen these guys, you're gonna change the alignment. The ball joint on the bottom side doesn't, uh, doesn't affect the alignment on here. The tie right end, we haven't loosened the jam nut or anything. So the way that I'm doing it today with pulling the ball joint, which is by the way, the way the service procedure from Ford says to do it, um, we shouldn't have to uh, get an alignment done after, after this job. But, if your ball joint doesn't want to come out and you don't want to wreck it or have issues with it, you could unbolt the strut from the, uh, from the knuckle assembly here. We'll spray a little PB blaster in here, try to help the situation a little bit, but it's pretty, uh, it's pretty crusty. Oh, one thing before we get that, uh, that knuckle assembly out, I'm, I'm just going to pull the ABS harness, uh, mount off of this side here. It's just a little, uh, little plastic Christmas tree pin, but I want to be able to have plenty of freedom to move this knuckle away without ruining that or, or separating any wires within the harness. So just pulling that guy away to uh, give us a little bit more clearance. We should be able to have enough clearance to pull this knuckle assembly away to get the axle shaft out without, uh, without pulling our ABS harness or our ABS sensor out. Um, Rust likes to keep those sensors stuck in place as well. So as you can tell, just putting pressure on that joint, it's not pulling it away at all. So I'm gonna take something in here and spread this out just a little bit. Beautiful. Nice and crusty. So we'll clean this ball joint up a little bit before we, uh, before we put it back in. There's our uh, old torn ring. So uh, yeah, this thing's in pretty, pretty rough shape. So now we got to pop the axle shaft out of the transmission. This thing's not just going to fall right out. It is, uh, it's got like a, it's got a little clip that's going to keep it locked into the transmission. So we got to pop that out. Now you can do this a couple of different ways. There's uh, like a fork tool that you can get behind there and you can pop it out with a, uh, with a slide hammer. Um, unfortunately I don't have one of those here. So we're gonna use a pry bar method against the transmission case to pop this thing out. So we gotta be careful here because we don't wanna wreck this aluminum case of the transmission. We don't wanna wreck this surface right up here where it's gonna seal, but we gotta get this axle shaft clip loose. So we'll just try to, oh, seriously? <laughs> That's it? I don't think one has ever come loose. Oh, that easy for me. Ah, 
Maybe the transmission should have been drained before this. I uh, might have missed that step in the service procedure. But there's our old axle shaft. So honestly, guys, uh, if you're doing this exact job following this procedure and your axle shaft comes out that easy, that's awesome, because normally they, they don't. Now, uh, normally if I wasn't replacing the axle seal, I would try to, to slam that new axle shaft in as quick as possible to lose as, as little of the fluid as possible, but because I'm doing an axle seal on here, we're gonna let it drain out for, uh, for a minute here. Um, if you want, you could drain out your transmission fluid ahead of time on this job. That way you're not leaking out now, but we'll let this thing drain until, uh, until it's just below that sealing surface so we can get our new seal pounded in. All right, so we're gonna be using this thing here to pop this seal out. Now you wanna be careful because these edges here are sharp. You don't want to be scraping the, the case of the transmission as we're pulling this out. We just wanna to try to pop it loose without, without wrecking the, the tranny. Hey, it landed in the pan. So now you can see we don't have any, oh, ew, oh, what is that? Here, let's get a shot of that, guys. Oh, look at that. I didn't even have the tool on that side. Look at that. See that gouge? Somebody has, uh, has definitely been in here before me. It looks like there's one right at the bottom where that fluid is coming out as well. That is nasty. We're gonna have to clean those up a little bit. So the, uh, the sharp edges are definitely reduced now. Um, you're never gonna get them perfect again, and I don't wanna take too much metal away from the case itself. So when we install the new seal, we'll just put a coating of uh, some, some RTV around it to kind of make up for those, those subtle imperfections in the case, and that should, uh, that should take care of us. All right, so like I said, to make up for those imperfections, I'm just gonna take some, I just have some right stuff sealant here. I'm just going to take and apply a, a small bead of that around the seal just to kind of make up any for any of those imperfections that would be in the transmission case, you know, hopefully present, preventing any leaks in the future. And then we'll just kind of spread that out nice on there and we don't want to have any excess on there going into the transmission case if we can avoid it. So uh, just a thin a thin layer on there just to make up for any, uh, any, uh, any of those marks on the transmission. You know, we cleaned them up as best as possible. Obviously, we're not putting a, a, a new transmission or reman or used transmission in, in this thing, you know, multiple thousand dollar job for a, a couple little things. I mean, this, the leak in the beginning wasn't even that bad to start with. So uh, to pound this seal in, uh, sometimes you can get creative. Uh, I don't have the exact tool that says you're supposed to use to install the seal, but you want to make sure that you're not, you're not pounding on this center ring. You'll rip the seal, you'll ruin the seal. You want to pound on the outer metal ring. So what I've got here is actually a, uh, a Toyota oil filter socket. It's part of a, a oil filter socket set that I have. So I'll just use that to, uh, to pound on that outer rim, that outer edge of the seal as we're installing this thing. Okay, so making sure that this is clean and dry, we'll get the seal set in here in place and just kind of pressed in by hand as far as it'll go. What's nice is that RTV kind of holds it in place too a little bit. We'll use our makeshift seal driver here to try to, try to knock this thing in. Just never, never fails. All right, so one thing that I forgot to mention, when you're, when you're cleaning up that transmission and making sure everything looks good, take a look at the old axle shaft. And if this vehicle would have the 6F35 Ford transmission in there, there's an issue with those transmissions to where they will have a metal transfer between the axle shaft and the bushing that's inside of the transmission itself. Now, this isn't that transmission, but it is possible if you're dealing with this problem and you're dealing with a 6F35, that there is a TSB for that transmission to where you have to replace the bushing that the axle shaft rides on. If you simply replace the seal and the bushing is bad, it'll leak right past that seal again. It'll have a, a repeat issue. So you'd want to look for a transfer of, uh, basically it looks like a transfer of metal or scraping on the axle shaft assembly or a discoloration of the, uh, 
of the bushing inside the transmission. Again, an 11 edge, it's not an issue, but if this were a, a, a 2012 edge, it could have that issue. That would run that other tranny, all right? Now we're ready to install our new axle shaft here. And before we do that, we want to make sure that this, uh, this dry surface as we install it into the seal and the transmission, that it doesn't tear the, uh, the transmission seal. We also want to make sure that this thing installs very nicely. So we want to just throw some lube on here. I'm just going to use uh, some wheel bearing grease on here to just, uh, to just lube up this shaft a little bit. We don't need a lot. Apparently we're not going to get any. All right, so of course the, uh, the grease gun was gone, but we do have some, this is wheel bearing grease in here, and uh, go figure, this is gone as well. Let's see if we can get enough on here. And again, we're just putting a thin, a thin coating on the splines, the C-clip at the end, just enough to uh, make sure that seal doesn't roll or tear as we're installing this thing. Um, we don't need a lot, just again, a thin, nice thin coating on there. Now this thing's ready to go in. Now when we install this, we want to feel that, that positive click as it installs. Then we know the C-clip has been seated properly. If it doesn't click, it's not going to seal. You're not going to have this seal hitting the right part of the shaft. So here we go. Let's put this thing in. Now as you can likely tell, our seal is actually a different color in here. The first seal that was pounded into this thing actually had an issue with the spring that sits right behind this lip. I don't know if you guys caught that when I was pounding it in, but the spring fell off. So I actually removed that seal and we went and got a different one and installed that seal onto here. So a little bit different color, uh, different brand seal, but uh, we're, we're gonna be, be good to go with this one. Now when we take the axle shaft to install it in here, you don't wanna install it at an angle like this if you can avoid it. You kinda wanna pivot the joint and try to install that shaft as straight into the seal as possible. We're going to kind of wiggle it back and forth, get it up into the transmission, and then we're going to kind of flex or use the outer part of the axle shaft to drive it into the transmission. Now it should click in place. Now don't go pulling the axle shaft this direction because you'll separate it at the, at the joint here. You'll want to grab around this part of the axle shaft and make sure it's clipped in place. This way it's not coming back out of the transmission. Now on the actual shaft splines that are going to go into the, uh, into the hub assembly, I'm going to lube those up as well because uh, hopefully if somebody were ever to have to have this thing apart again, uh, it'll, it'll come out easier. So I'm just going to use some of my uh, brake lube, this uh, high temp ceramic brake lube. Just a little bit on the, uh, on the splines here, we're going to keep the grease off of the threads themselves. And then pull our knuckle assembly out and feed this thing into there. And as you're, as you're installing this in, moving the, the outer hub can help to align the splines. It appears that I'm hitting the control arm. Beautiful. It's nice when it goes all the way in there like that without having to, to draw the axle shaft through the hub assembly. All right, now that we have the control arm pinched down a little bit, we're just gonna clean up this ball joint a little bit, see how it looks. So actually it's not too, not too rusty. Throw just a little bit of that grease in here as well. Sometimes it's hard being a, the guy filming. Um, according to Ford, you are supposed to replace this bolt and, and this nut for the ball joint. Um, so definitely, uh, you know, 
go to the dealer and buy that nut and bolt. Uh, we're going to just throw some, uh, some blue Loctite on there. All right, the torque spec for this ball joint nut on here is 41 foot pounds. But because we spread out that, uh, that connection point or that, that bottom seat of where the ball joint is sitting, I'm going to torque this thing down, I'm going to loosen it up, and I'm going to retorque it just in case the torque is taking um, some of that metal and, and pinching it back together. I want to make sure that we're getting an accurate torque in case we are actually pinching that metal. So it's just something that I do, a little peace of mind for myself. But we'll hit the torque value, loosen it back up, and then retorque it. All right, 41 foot-pounds on there. Now we can get our tie rod end reinstalled. Eighteen millimeter again on this one. Pushing up on the tie rod end to make sure it's seated into the knuckle will keep it from spinning as you're trying to install the nut. You want to just force it up. Sometimes you can use a pry bar on here too. We'll see if we can do it by hand. All right, just snug it and then we'll torque that down to 35 foot pounds. And then don't forget to put your clip back in. If your clip got damaged before, you could use a cotter pin or something in here. But ours is still in good shape. We gotta reinstall our sway bar link. Which is gonna be a real joy because it's hitting the axle shaft. There we go. So just like this nut came off kind of difficult, where we had to uh, be secure on there, we'll likely have to do the same thing when, when reinstalling. So I'm just going to have it on there already. The good thing is now that the rust and everything is already cleaned off the threads, it should, should go together pretty nice. Um, you can probably replace these nuts too. These are nylon nuts on here, so it wouldn't be a bad idea. All right, these will get torqued down to 66 foot-pounds. Okay, so now we're going to get the... Uh brake rotor back on and installed um, and then we'll bring our caliper back down throw a little blue a little bit of blue Loctite on these uh, brake caliper bracket bolts caliper bracket bolts are uh, 19 millimeter on there and again we're just gonna snug them up quick and then uh, torque those down as well And we shouldn't have to touch the, uh, the caliper bolts themselves since we, uh, we didn't uh, loosen those up. So surprisingly, the torque spec on these uh, caliper bracket bolts is only 96 foot-pounds on there. So pretty low, actually, for caliper bracket bolts. I'm kind of surprised. All right, brake caliper bracket bolt is torqued down. Our rotor's on, we can take our lug nut back off so we'll be able to get the wheel back on in a minute. Uh, one other thing to note when you're getting the caliper back installed, make sure that you, um, you don't twist up this brake hose because right now it was, you know, it was off the bracket. You don't want to accidentally get it all twisted up and, uh, and kinked. So just make sure that it's uh, sitting where it should be on there. Um, I'm sure there's a torque spec for this little bracket bolt, but uh, let's be real, I don't think anybody actually torques it. We're just going to get it snug. All right. 
So that'll hold our brake hose in place. And I think all we got is our ABS clip here and we got to get our wheel back on. But actually, before we do that, we got to get our axle nut on. And somewhere amongst the chaos here, I've lost the new axle nut. There it is. So uh, old style axle nut with this, with the original shaft had like a nylon insert in here, just like the ball joint nut, just like the sway bar link nuts. Um, so they are supposed to be one time use. Um, I also like that it has a washer on it. The new style nut that comes with the new shaft is a uh, smaller, I think that's smaller diameter hex, let's see. It's a larger diameter hex, so the new axle shaft nut that I got with this shaft is a 36 millimeter nut. And uh, it's probably gonna be kind of hard to tell here, but there's, there's two like flats on it. Those are basically the locking points of the, uh, of the washer so that as you're, as you're tightening it down, it, it may not have the nylon on it, but it, uh, it is a locking style nut. So now this nut, it is important to torque. Don't just ram this thing down with your impact and, uh, and call it good. You do want to torque this thing down. Now it does have a pretty beefy torque value on here. I believe, let's check back on the spec, but I believe the torque value on here is something like uh, 250 plus. Take a look here. Uh, 258 foot pounds on here. So we're gonna run it snug with the impact and then finalize the, uh, the torque with the torque wrench. All right, just to where it started hitting uh, after the nut was installed all the way. And then we're gonna go down to 258 foot pounds. And uh, obviously as you're trying to torque this down, you, you can't, right? It's gonna spin the whole hub assembly completely normal. You gotta, you gotta find a way to kind of lock it in place. I'm gonna use a pry bar to do that. You could get the help from an assistant as well. But what I wanna do is I'll get it on these studs here and uh, you could pinch that pry bar against the ground or for me, I'm gonna pinch it against the arm of the hoist and hopefully it won't uh, come flying out at me. Maybe I'm gonna pinch it, let's try that again. I ate my Wheaties this morning. <clears throat> 258 foot pounds. You gotta, you know, really put your back into it. But now that's tight. Oh, I think what? All we got left to do is put the, uh, put the wheel back on. So, we never loosen the strut to knuckle bolts. We don't have to worry about those. Brake caliper bracket bolts were torqued down with blue Loctite. Sway bar link uh, bolts are retightened down. Again, those are nylon washers. Technically, they should be replaced. Be a great opportunity to replace the sway bar link as well. Ball joint nut is tightened down. Tie rod end is tightened down. Everything is back to the way it should be. So let's get that wheel on and get this thing finished up. All right, we'll tighten it down the rest of the way, uh, the rest of the way on the ground. We'll actually, you know, torque it by hand. But I wanted to get the wheel on because I always do a final, a final verification to make sure everything is good uh, when you get it all back together. Make sure there's no loose ball joint or tie rod end or anything like that. So I'll do the, the shake side to side and make sure there's no play in the wheel side to side. And then I'll do the uh, shake top to bottom as well. Make sure there's no play. Uh, the wheel should be tight, uh, connected to the knuckle. So. Uh, spin it around, make sure we didn't uh, bend up the brake shield. We shouldn't hear any scraping if the brake shield or the, the tin shield that's behind the brake rotor, if that were to get bent, you could hear that scraping against the rotor, but it sounds good, everything's quiet. Uh, you guys probably saw me early on, I, I used a, a screwdriver to kind of pry the brake pad uh, caliper bracket back a little bit. So the first brake application here, we wanna make sure we pump up the brake a couple times to make sure uh, Make sure everything is set where it needs to be for the brakes. Um, other than that, this job is complete. So ABS concern for a uh, 
for an intermittent ABS engagement, especially at low speeds, we saw that left front sensor dropping out on the scan tool. Uh, saw the tone ring here was, uh, was split, it was cracked, causing an erratic signal out of the left front wheel speed sensor. Fix it up by putting an axle shaft in. Oh, also, make sure you top off the transmission. We have about, uh, I don't know, call it maybe three quarts of uh, transmission fluid sitting in the pan down there. So we're going to uh, throw some new fluid in the tranny when we get this thing back down as well. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the step-by-step -step process and uh, me sharing just you know some of the struggles that we had here dealing with rust and all the other, the fun stuff that we get to deal with here. So I really appreciate you guys watching. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already. Thumbs up. Also, tell us you uh, tell us you love the video by by doing those things. Otherwise, if you have questions, comments, concerns about the way that I've done something today, make sure to drop those down in the comments below. Check us out on social media as well: Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter. Actually, not LinkedIn. We don't have a channel out there yet, but Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and uh, oh, TikTok as well. Make sure to check us out there. So. I really appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for sticking with us through the entire video. And as always, everyone, happy wrenching. Thank you.